saya punya video ni uh, muka saya ni gelap tak? Gelap lah Nina. Nah, jangan 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 buka lampu. Saya buka lampu. <laughs> Tak saya tak macam for you saya tukar ni Tapi terpaksa pakai Kalau tak tak dengar This one better ke? Uh, better daripada tadi uh-uh. Sounds so good Dekat Kak Nina punya laptop tu dia ada keluar macam cahaya tak? Uh, tadi mula-mula ada apa tak ada dah? Ada dah Cahaya apa? Tak tahu dekat laptop saya kan? ni ada macam cahaya tak tahu macam cahaya tak tahu. Macam klik-klik kan? Tak tak klik memang dia kalau saya open kamera memang macam tu. Oh tak ada pula. Tak ada pula. Ha. Mungkin percayaan kat rumah saya lah kot. Okay, kat mana nak dapat link YouTube eh? Nanti nanti dia orang bagi kot komiti bagi eh. Tak tahu. Oh okay. Kita boleh buka dua-dua ke? Hmm, tak tahu takut. lah. Takut kan? Takut, takut mengat, takut ni. Ah, ganggu ya. ataupun. Hmm. We will start later lah. Okay, dah start live stream, we will start on 2.30. Ah, tu dah, dah ada link YouTube lah. Ah, boleh tak jadikan saya host, saya nak share screen. Ah, boleh, boleh. Kak Nina boleh jadikan saya co-host Kak Nina? Akak ni host ke? Co-host juga rasanya Tak boleh uh, Saya rasa um, Wan Khairul tu boleh Siapa uh, Saya dah minta Wan praktek Khairul? untuk uh, co-host kan Seri Duan Thank you Sudah oh, dah 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 Alright Sudah yeah. Uh, Cuma nya nanti uh, kita ada ada bacaan doa which okay. is pre recorded so nanti brother Wan Khairul akan share screen dulu. Okay, I stop scare share it back. Okay.
Alright. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good evening to everyone. My name is Naila Nafisa binti Muhammad Azhar Kashi, your MC for today's briefing and introduction to Department of Legal Studies. So before we begin, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to our speakers of honour, the Head of Department, Madam Fariza binti Abdul Jalal Bakri, Course Coordinator, Madam Nina Shazmin binti Muhammad Din, Academic Advisor, Ms. Siti Farhana binti Abu Hassan, Advisor for Law Student Society, Milex, Sir Muhammad Ridwan bin Saleh. And last but not least, the students of CFSIRUM who are joining us through YouTube Live. To begin the department briefing and introduction with blessings of Allah, I would like to call upon Brother Muhammad Darul Naim bin Abdul Muttalib, the Vice President 2 of Language Student Society, to lead the recitation of Dua. Please welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على حبيبنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا الله يا فعل لما يريد Oh Allah, we express our gratitude to you for allowing us to attend this event on this auspicious day Oh Allah, we ask you for the safety of our religion and the welfare of our body O oh Allah, Lord of the Implementing Authority, make the days that we have gone through, starting with your mercy, continue with your blessing and righteous guidance, ended with your forgiveness. Make the days that we have gone through, spend in your obedience, adorn us with the adornment of the righteous and close us with the adornment of the peace in spreading good behavior, lowering the wing of humility, beauty of conduct, advancing towards excellence, avoiding condemnation, being gracious to the undeserving, Speaking truth, talk better. Ya Allah, Ya Muhaymin, Ya Aziz, Ya Jabbar. Let our efforts as a means to enlighten and convince ourselves that your personal safety of either outer or inner is a prerequisite for achieving happiness and excellence in various fields. Oh Allah, grant us faith and strength in order to face the challenges of life during these needy yet troubling times and in the face of life in this new norm. Ya Allah, Ya Farijal Ham, Ya Kashif Al Ram, Ya Manli Abdihi, Ya Lufir Wa Yarham. Oh Allah, show us guidance and adjust our path and ways to achieve happiness and glory. Let us listen to people who like to good things. Let us avoid doing the bad and evil things. Oh Allah, bless our life in the gathering and prevent us from harm and unfortunate events. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna minal khasirin. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanah wa fil akhirati hasanah wa qina adhab an-nar. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka salam. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Raqaballahu minkum. Amin Ya Rabbal Alamin. Thank you Brother Naim for the dua recitation. May our event today run smoothly and blessed by Allah. Before we proceed with the briefing, I would like to remind all students to fill out the attendance form that will be provided later. You may also ask questions by writing down in the comment section. So without further ado, I would like to invite our first speaker, the Head of Department of Legal Studies, Madam Farhiza binti Abdul Jalal Bakri, to begin, the honor is yours. Thank you, thank you very much, Sister Naila. And can host uh, share the slides? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <clears throat> First and foremost, I would like to congratulate uh, and welcome all of you to Department of Legal Studies, Center for Foundation Studies of IIUM. Hi, how are you? Um, congratulations again for being uh, able to secure the hot seat. Yeah? Uh, and uh, come as our new law student for semester one in Tech session 2021 and 2022. 
congratulations again. Are you excited? <laughs> I can see here, uh, Brother Khalish, Nasrin, Marisa, Rin, Hai, Adiba, Nurin, Haris, Hafiz. Yeah. Um, Inshallah, today we are going to have a briefing yeah, for a session that you're being waiting for. Even though you have already a uh, last night session with Sister Naila and Brother Mikhail. Um, and uh, that is a bit uh, helpful, very helpful indeed. And inshallah, we're going to add on more on uh, what you need eh, uh, to know about all about your first journey, academic journey uh, to uh, our university. And today uh, will be uh, the briefing will be assisted by my colleagues here. Yeah? Uh, and again, congratulations. I hope you know how lucky you are, how grateful you should be to Allah yeah, for be able to reach, uh, to be able to uh, be a student, a chance to be human, to be Khalifa, yeah? um, and also to be part of this prestigious university. Next slide. Okay, this is the outline for today's briefings, what you're going to have. So uh, please get ready with your pen, pencils, and eh? get ready to the excitement of um, a week before we start the semester. And today we're going to brief you all what you need to know. Okay, and uh, you have, uh, you will be, uh, there'll be introduction. I can introduce you with the departments and you need to know who are in the department, who are the lecturers, your lecturers that will be part of your journey to the excellence, eh? uh, organizational structure, the course modules, yeah? academic requirement, yeah? what you need to, uh, what are the subject that you need to fulfill before you exit the foundation, eh? before you go to Kulia, the study plan, yeah? uh, future in ICO, what you have, what waiting for you in uh, ICO, lah, yeah? And next, what would be the, the registration for the Quranic language? Yeah, this is especially for Sharia stream. Yeah. Um, it will be explained further by uh, my colleagues, Madam Nina, a bit later on. Then we have course performance evaluation, conduct of classes during RTL. Yeah, you mungkin dah biasa lah dengan ODL kan? Uh, so uh, this time around, you are in university, so whether or not it is still the same, or what you need to prepare, what will be the class ethics, and that will be explained here. And last but not least is your uh, active corner. We have Academic Based Law Student Society, MILAX. Yeah? Uh, this is where your um, platform to get involved, eh? to get additional skills, yeah? uh, extra added skills eh? for your lifelong learning skills. Um, will be explained by our brother Ridwan eh? uh, a bit later on also. And last uh, is your legal career pathway. What you, uh, this is your imagination. Most of you perhaps may not know what you're going to, what you're going to do with law degree. How I'm going to now, is it, is it law is doing okay? Is there any market available to you? So these are the questions. These are what you're going to see. That will be answer your question, whether or not you are in the right path. Inshallah, you'll be in the right path. Next. Okay, let's begin with our organizational structure. Uh, okay, as you can see, this is the lineup of the department. Uh, those uh, who have legal backgrounds, and eh, most of them um, come from our university and from generation, lah, other generation, uh, uh, my teacher's generation, and other young medium generation and other junior generation. So you are very lucky to have a series of batches of IIUM alumni and also a product of IIUM. Eh? Uh, department is leaded uh, or headed by me, yeah, Madam Farah Abdujalal Bakri, uh, and assisted by uh, Sister Nazuha Binti Mat Tom. Uh, so if you go to the department somewhere in next semester, lah, inshallah, kan? Uh, you will see her, uh, you'll be able to see her if you have, uh, you need to lie in layers with any of the lecturer or assistant from the administrative matters, you can see her, eh? our sister Nazuha, Kak Zuha. Okay, and your course coordinator, uh, course coordinator uh, is Madam Nina Shazmi Muhammadin. Uh, she will, she will come to you, uh, explain to you on your course. Uh, this is a very important person uh, for you to consult lah. 
uh, with together we miss Siti uh, uh, Farhana, your academic advisor, Siti Farhana Binti Abu Hassan. Uh, this is also very important uh, person for you to deal with, to liaise with whenever you have any issues with your academic eh, academic matters. Okay, satu subjek ke, nak add subjek ke, tak dapat subjek usrah ke, ya, macam mana pun, you, uh, you can see her. Uh, InsyaAllah, she'll be very helpful. And next. Okay, this is uh, again uh, our lineup uh, Sifu. Uh, Sifu, kita punya uh, uh, selecturer, eh? uh, super senior lecturer. Uh, Madam Badariah binti Sadin, yeah, orang Melaka, uh, siapa orang Melaka ni? Uh, eh, ni Madam awak eh. Uh, very talented, very knowledgeable person, yeah, you are lucky to have. If you have uh, happen to be in her class, inshallah you will love it. Yeah? Uh, such very experienced and knowledgeable person. Eh? And next we Madam Siti Humaya binti Bakri, uh, it's also another Sifu in our department. Very, very senior, very respectful lecturer. Uh, you're going to love her. Yeah, uh, with the joke and everything that we have, brother Mushid Kasim. Uh, ni tak perlu diperkenalkan lagi. Our own, your own dean, yeah, center for foundation study. Uh, also will be part of your lecturers, uh, insyaallah. And next we have uh, Madam Mizan binti Muhammad. Uh, she is now attached to IIUM Academy, yeah, Academy and uh, graduate professionals, uh, graduate studies, yeah. Uh, and also, she's also a director of uh, IIUM World, uh, I want, eh? IIUM World and Oratory uh, Center. Uh, next, we have in the lines of uh, the department is Madam Sri Shah Zamila Panot, eh? uh, Johorian. Yeah? Um, also, will be part of your uh, academic journey this semester. Yeah, Insha'Allah, you're going to love her a lot. And then we have Madam Masba Binti Termizi. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you are, she's not able, she is um, uh, not available in this academic year. She is now seconded to other department, language management and uh, department, language management department. Next, we have, uh, we do have, DLS have a junior lecturer, uh, not so junior, uh, very good lecturer. Uh, Madam Sahida binti Safwan, who is now on study leave. Yeah, uh, inshallah, you will be able to see her in two years uh, with her doctorate. Inshallah, let's pray for her. Next on the list, we have Madam Adiba binti Ali. Uh, just come back from her maternity leave. A uh, very uh, warm person. Uh, you're going to love her as well. <laughs> Uh, one and only, uh, this is the most active person, eh? Our brother Muhammad Ridwan bin Saleh, very active, uh, very helpful, of course, uh, uh, single uh, bachelor <laughs> in our department, uh, and, and he's also our, your, going to be do, your advisor for the Milak Society. Uh, next on the list is Miss Putri Amelia Nurhanani Binti Azizan, uh, she's a uh, our uh, senior, uh, senior juga uh, in our department, uh, you will be able to enjoy her class. She's a vlogger, blogger. Eh? Uh, so hopefully uh, you're going to see her next week, inshallah, eh? remotely. And last but not least, this is Sister Nazuha. Uh, okay, nak kena kenal lah. You can ingat, okay, this is Nazuha, Kak Zuha. Okay, it will be an uh, administrative uh, officer in our department. All right. Okay, uh, for the course module, I will pass the baton to your uh, Madam uh, course coordinator, Madam Nina. Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I hope you can all hear me in YouTube. I'm sorry for the um, dark setting on my camera bukan setting, it's, um, it's a bit dark here because it's, it's raining uh, and I switched on the light already but it's still dark, never mind. Uh, so I am Madam Nina Shazmin, you can call me Madam Nina. I'm the course coordinator of um, Department of Legal Studies 
So basically, as a course coordinator, I will um, manage and handle academic matters okay, uh, for the department, uh, such as um, managing the uh, course module of your uh, journey in the CFS, yeah? um, on the exam, examination, uh, examination uh, matters, on the um, special exam, uh, if let's say you cannot attend the exam, then you need to contact me. And uh, if, if you fail or you 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 want you you have to repeat the paper, uh, I will be the one who handle that matter. Okay. So for um, today, I will brief you on the course module, uh, whereby uh, I will explain to you what are the subjects, the most important part, lah. Okay, what are the sub subjects that you will be um, learning throughout your, inshallah, one year journey in the CFS. So one year journey um, uh, means uh, three semesters, three semesters uh, with 12 weeks for each semester. Okay, so it's a um, normal semester lah, 12 weeks. Uh, so, plus kali tiga, uh, around uh, one year lah all together. Tampu cuti semua ya. Okay, next slide. <coughs> okay. So, once you um, click accepted or you you, you uh, accept the offer of a letter from CFS and IBM, um, you are now in the, um, at the gate to the Garden of Knowledge and Virtue. Okay, so. IUM is IUM um, tagline or logo or logo, motto is the gate uh, the garden of knowledge and virtue. So when you enter step as or, or the um, foundation center, it means you are already at the gate of that garden. you have garden lagi, you have to complete the, the courses, you have to complete all the uh, requirements to graduate from CFS first, then only you will be um entering the main camp main campus uh, in gomba okay so uh i will brief you what are the courses that you need to take and you need to pass for you to enter uh, to pursue your degree so this is foundation okay uh asasi and the next um path would be uh degree level okay so number one, we have specialized courses. Okay, specialized courses means a uh, courses or subjects that is um, designed only for that particular department. Okay, like you are uh, under department of legal studies. Law students are under department of legal studies. Maybe for other student, other courses, other other um, uh, other department like uh, kawan awak yang dapat uh, IRK, for example, or HS. They are under their respective department. So every department will have its own uh, organization lah. Okay, macam yang mana para explain just now. Okay, so this one only for law students. So this, they are um, six subjects. Okay, so all law students in CFS will be um, learning, or will be taking all these six subjects that will be divided into uh, the three semesters. Okay. So uh, you won't be learning the same subjects uh, in same same one, same two, and same three. So we have three semesters, so six subjects into uh, law department. Uh, for example, the first semester, this semester, yeah, you will be taking introduction to law and introduction to Islamic law. So the, we have the study plan. It will be uh, explained by Ms. Fahana later. Okay. So um, basically, you will be learning that subject only for one semester, which is 12 weeks. So that's why they are all introduction. Okay, we cannot uh, prepare you for the the whole um, law courses for that particular uh, subject. So only introduction and the surface. We have another four years journey to learn uh, in the deeper uh, deeper level. Yeah. Okay. Let us me. Let, I will just explain briefly um, the um, overview or the content of each subject. Yeah. So introduction to law. Um, I think as the name uh, written there, uh, it is for the um, introductory part of the course itself. Okay, introductory part of the law. Okay, 
you did not learn law in in uh, secondary school. You learn um, uh, history, okay? But uh, there's no law, no law subject, again. So this is very new to you. So we will equip you with the, um, for example, uh, the definition of law. What is law according to uh, references? Uh, and then um, classification of law. Okay, uh, it is not only there's, there's not only one particular law applicable. Uh, the functions, um, the sources of law. Okay, so these are all under introduction to law. Okay. <clears throat> and then introduction to Islamic law. Um, you will be uh, exposed to the uh, introductory part of Islamic law only. Okay. Like introduction to law is a bit general. Introduction to Islamic law is um, specific on Islamic law. What are the sources? Quran and Sunnah. What are um, uh, how is it uh, applicable in Malaysia? Contohnya, kan? okay. And then in the second semester, uh, you will be taking introduction to legal skills and introduction to contract and tort law. So this is a bit more specific than the first semester. Okay, you will be um, taught on the skills that is needed uh, in the legal field. Okay, so we prepare you to become a legal professional, lah. not necessarily a lawyer, it could be other, other professions, but these are the, um, what we call that, I, I would say compulsory skills or needed skills uh, that you need to uh, master uh, while, 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 while reading law. And then introduction to contract and tort law. So this is also a specific uh, type of law. Okay? Maybe uh, sekarang yang you tahu mungkin syariah law, civil law. So under civil law, there are a lot more branches. So uh, for the second semester, we will be focusing on contract and tort law. Okay. And then uh, in the final semester, semester three, you will be taking introduction to constitutional and criminal law. <coughs> okay. Constitutional law is um, what is happening now in our political political field in our uh, country. In, in, the, in maybe you read in the newspaper, in the social media about the parliament, about the uh, apa, uh, election. They are all under constitution. Okay? So that is part of constitutional law. Okay, sebaliknya uh, undang-undang perlembagaan. And then um, criminal law. So this is very popular. Uh, this is what uh, this this type of law uh, have been uh, the cases under this law. They have been reported a lot in in uh, in the newspaper, yeah? um, like uh, murder case. They're all under criminal law. Murder, drug, um, rape. Yeah? Uh, what else? Mm, corruption. Okay. So semua tak ada criminal law. So for, for each uh, of this uh, type, you will be exposed to the very introduction, very intro, um, very surface on the on the surface. No, but um, you will be learning that uh, in the uh, in in that in uh, Gombak later. Okay, and last subject, the, the final one uh, under our department is the subject of law and society. <clears throat> Uh, that will discuss on the um, relation between uh, the law and the society. Okay? For example, you have um, you will be learning on law and morality. How does it relate to each other? Law and government, law and uh, IT, okay? law and education. Okay? So uh, that will be uh, taught in the law and society. So that is specialized course. Special courses, six subjects under our department. So these subjects will be taught by the lecturers yang gambar-gambar tadi lah, yang Minu Farah introduced tadi. Okay, so besides this uh, specialized course, you will also have to um, fulfill center required courses. Okay, center required courses means semua orang in that CF, in, uh, all students in CFS will have to Pass will have to fulfill or uh, complete these subjects in order to graduate from CFS. So uh, maybe your friends from IRK, your friends from HS, they will also be taking these subjects. Maybe the, on, the, the only difference, maybe they will they, they are taking it in different, different semester than you. 
okay, you will be you will, you take understanding Islam one in the first semester. Your friend is a uh, course HS, uh, take and and uh, understanding Islam one second semester, depending on the uh, offering of that particular department. So these subjects, okay, um, I will read the subject first. Yeah? So altogether there are six. Sorry, five. Understanding Islam 1 and 2, basic application of ICT and Usrah 1 and 2. Sama juga, it will be um, separated into a different um, semester. Yeah. Uh, okay, for Understanding Islam, this course is offered by Department of IRK, meaning IRK lecturers will teach you these subjects. Okay, uh, and then uh, ICT. Uh, will be taught uh, will be taught by ICT lecturers uh, and Usrah and Usrah 1 and Usrah 2 uh, you will have your own Nakiba okay? uh, if I'm not mistaken the Nakiba will be among your uh, friends uh, but this this one will be handled by uh, the mosque office in the office of the mosque so maybe they will have a different um, separate um, briefing with you Okay, next. <clears throat> Another type of subjects they will be taking is known as core courses. Okay. Uh, core course here means uh, only um, art student or science student. So, uh, macam law ni is under arts. Okay? Science like um, uh, students yang ambil uh, sciences course, they will have a different core course that need to be completed. So, for all art student like IRK, economy, uh, law, they will be taking these subjects, which is thinking skills. Okay. So these subjects will be currently, uh, is offered in semester three. Okay. Offered by Department of Human Science, but it will be taught by uh, Department of uh, Law, Legal, Skills, Legal Studies Department. So meaning um, the material, the books will be under HS, but this subject will be taught by us, by the lecture, law lecturer. Yeah. Okay. Last one, another uh, um, subject that you need to fulfill, complete, is of course, languages. <clears throat> okay. So, um, there are two English and Quranic language. Okay, we go first to English language. Okay, there are uh, three levels of English language. Okay. Level 4, level 5, and level 6. Okay. Your level of, your placement of level will be uh, according, will be uh, based on the EPT placement, English uh, placement test. Yeah. I think I've, uh, I, I'm not sure whether you have uh, undergone um, EPT briefing or not, maybe in the few, in these few days. So, um, EPT placement test will also will be based on the SPM, on your SPM result, English SPM result. Okay. So uh, let's say you, you got a B, C plus, C or D in your SPM. Okay. That will be your placement for EPT as well. So uh, in that uh, in that in that case, you will be placed in English level four. Okay, so in the semester, in the first semester, you will be you will um, enter English level 4 class and then uh, second semester English level 5, third semester English level 6. Okay. For those who got B plus in their uh, SPM for English, uh, you will be placed in English level 5. Okay. But the offerings um, time, um, I'm not sure whether it will be offered right away master semester 1 or you will be uh, taking it in semester two. Because um, remember, kalau level five, they hanya ada dua level to complete. So they may delay your class to, um, to complete level two and level, uh, in, to complete it in semester two and semester three. Okay? So yang 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 tiga semester ada subclass tu yang level four lah. Okay, yang, this one it has to be, has to, uh, to check your study plan lah, ambil waktu bila. Who will determine uh, the um, apa ni? Uh, department of ODAL, ODAL. Yeah, Office of Deputy Dean of Academic uh, in, and Industrial Linkages. Okay. 
And then uh, those who got A minus for SPM in English, you will be placed in level six of um, the, uh, English class. Okay. So again, uh, same thing. Uh, you may or may not uh, uh, take it in this semester. Not necessarily you, take, you will take it in this semester. It could be next semester or the third semester. Yeah. Okay. For those who got A plus or A okay, uh, in their SPM for English, okay, for A plus, you will be exempted. Exempted here means you do not have to take English classes at all in um, TFS. Okay. Uh, but for A, siapa yang dapat A, you will be sitting for a writing test and if your mark in that writing test, um, you pass in that writing test, you will also be exempted. So um, A minus, sorry, A plus will be automatically exempted, but A, they are eligible for, to be exempted if they pass the writing test. So, uh, yang lain-lain tu, they you won't be uh, sitting for writing test lah because the automatic will be um, according to your uh, SPM result, APT placement and the level dah ada dah. Dia punya, dia punya match tu. Okay, but for yang dapat A, kena ambil exam. Sorry, bukan exam, is test lah. Okay, another subject that is um, unique lah dekat, dekat law, law or dekat law ini is you will be, you everyone will have to pass or will have to undergo uh, Quranic language or uh, Arabic language, eh? Bahasa Quran. Okay. <clears throat> so there are two types of Quranic language, which is Quranic language English medium and Quranic language um, Arabic medium. Okay. English medium is for those who wish, who interested and who is Sorry, Mila. Yeah, Quranic, uh, English, language, English medium is for those who are not uh, taking Sharia. Okay, so you will be uh, uh, brief about this about this Sharia thing uh, by Miss Fahana. Okay, so for for those who not taking Arabic, for example, in the SPM, okay, at a point uh, you you got D or E for Arabic in your SPM. Okay, you will be placed in Quranic language one, okay, level one. Okay. <clears throat> and then for those who got C, C plus, or B in Quranic, in Arabic, uh, Bahasa Arab dekat SPM, you will be placed in Quranic language level two. Okay. Uh, go back to the river. Okay, for the third type, the exempted to B plus, A minus, A and A plus, you will be exempted. Okay, so if you are exempted, meaning that sama lah macam English tadi, you don't have you you, you already pass this uh, subject for any English medium. Okay, and you also eligible to uh, further your um, study in Quranic language to Sharia medium yang nak ambil syariah. Next slide. Okay. This one is for Quranic language, Arabic medium. Okay, Arabic medium here means syariah. Okay. Syariah ni nak baca syariah, kena belajar Arabic lebih lah. Okay. So, uh, only um, students who got A plus, A, A plus, A, A minus and B plus are eligible to pursue this subject. Okay, this level. Okay. Okay. Uh, students who got A, A minus or B plus in uh, SPM and wish and interested and eligible, of course, uh, to um, pursue Sharia later in Gomba, you will have to um, go to this path, lah, which is uh, extra classes for Arabic, extra level. So, kita akan start dengan level 2, uh, Quranic language. Okay. And then, um, those who got A+, plus, okay, akan start dengan level 3. Okay. 
And then uh, after that, you have to complete to uh, up to Quranic language level four to in order for you to um, continue uh, taking uh, double degree in Gomba. Okay, kalau tak faham, nanti boleh tanya soalan nanti kita kita ada Q&A session. <coughs> okay. Uh, uh, since this is my last slide, maybe ada so ada soalan kat sini, I will just jawab lah sekejap eh. Only writing skill, only writing will be tested with APT, yes. Only writing and uh, only for those who got age lah. Yang lain tu dah tak payah dah. Okay, now we go to the next um, briefing, which is briefing on your study plan. Okay, I pass the floor to Miss Farhana, our academic advisor. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Madam Dina Shazmin, our course coordinator. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Siti Farhana binti Abu Hassan, your academic advisor from the Department of Legal Studies. So before I start my briefing, uh, I would like to welcome all of you to CFS IAUM and uh, congratulations uh, for being selected as one of the law students in CFS IAUM. Okay, so basically, uh, the first part of my briefing, uh, I will explain to you with regard to your study plan. Okay, I will explain to you how to read your study plan. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is the study plan uh, prepared uh, for our law student. Okay, foundation in law, curriculum structure. Uh, actually, we have two types of study plan. Okay, the first one uh, for those uh, who do not intend to pursue uh, with an LBS degree in Gomba, but this first one is uh, for those who do not intend to pursue with your LLBS degree in Gomba, uh, this is basically your study plan, okay? So if you take a look uh, at the study plan, okay, there are certain indications, okay, that you can derive from this study plan. Uh, the first one is uh, the courses, okay, that you have to take throughout your one year study in CFS IOM, okay? All the courses that you have to take, okay, throughout your one year study in CFS IOM. Now, if you take a look at the right side, of the study plan right side here is it, sorry my left side okay uh, these are the courses that you have to complete okay as explained by medium linea previously okay uh, we have thinking skill the core course okay offered by department of human science okay and then we have uh, the specialized courses uh, offered by our department department of legal studies okay we have six uh, six specialized courses altogether uh, the first one is introduction to law introduction to islamic law and then we have introduction to legal skills introduction to contract and thought law introduction to constitutional and criminal law and last one is law and society okay the next part uh, the blue in color okay are the uh, center required courses okay for understanding islam one and understanding islam two offered by uh, the department of islamic review knowledge okay and then uh, the third uh, center required course uh, is basic application of ICT offered by Department of ICT. Okay, and then the last part, the blue in color, uh, sorry, the green in color uh, are the language uh, courses, okay, offered by uh, either ELD, okay, for English, uh, English language and QLD for Quranic uh, uh, subject, okay, sorry, Quranic uh, course. Okay, if you take a look at the uh, study plan, okay, CR there, Okay, CR, it refers to your credit hours. Okay, CR, it refers to your credit hours. So you will have to know the credit hour because uh, that credit hour, it will be used uh, in the calculation of your uh, GPA and CTPA. And then CT there, it refers to your contact hours. Okay, the, num uh, the hours of your attendance of a particular class in a week. Okay. Okay, and then secondly, if you take a look at the study plan, okay, you can see the distribution of subjects uh, for each particular semester, okay, for semester one, semester two, and semester three. Okay, for example, if, if you take a look at the semester one, okay, we indicate uh, the four, 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 nine, nine, semua tu, yang tu actually the contact hours, okay. So, kalau dekat situ ada contact hours dekat subject two, meaning that you are going to take, uh, you are going to take that particular subject in that semester. Okay, so for example, semester one, okay, we uh, we offer introduction to law and introduction to Islamic law, okay, and then you are going to take understanding Islam one, okay, and if you are not exempted uh, from English uh, course, okay, you will have to take English level four and 
uh, uh, kalau tak exempted for your Quranic course as well, then you will have to take uh, Quranic uh, level one. Okay, so for semester two, for example, the subjects are offered by our department are introduction to legal skills and introduction to contract and tort law. Okay, the same uh, in your semester three, okay, you will have to take thinking skills, uh, introduction to constitutional uh, and criminal law, and the last one is law and society, okay, together with the uh, center required courses as well as the languages. So it depends on the level uh, of your APT and EPT, okay, then you will have to know uh, your position lah. Okay, which uh, what are the subjects that you have you have to take in that particular semester? Okay, and then uh, in your study plan as well. Okay, you can see the as I explained previously the credit and contact hours of that particular uh, course. Okay, so uh, for the courses offered by our department. Okay, for example, introduction to law, introduction to Islamic law, the credit hours and the contact hours are the same. Okay, so contact hours four, credit hour four as well. Okay, however, if you take a look at the uh, language courses, okay, mungkin contact hours dia adalah four, sorry, credit hour dia adalah four, tapi dia punya contact hours adalah nine. Okay, then you have to take a look into that particular subject, okay, to know the credit hour and the contact hour of that particular subject. Okay, and the last one, okay, you can see the total uh, number of credit hour and contact hours, okay, uh, throughout your one year study here in CFS IIUM. Okay, then you have to fulfill uh, depending on the level of your APT and APT as well. Okay, ada some student kalau yang memang kena complete all tu, then you have to fulfill 55 credit hours. So contact hours approximately dalam 76.5. So it depends. Okay, it depends on the level of your APT and APT. Okay, so the next one uh, is the study plan uh, for foundation in law, okay, Arabic medium. So Arabic medium meaning that uh, you uh, you are eligible and interested to pursue with your LLBS degree in Gomba. Then here in CFS IAM, what you have to do, you have to complete your uh, Arabic, uh, sorry, Quranic language Arabic medium courses. Uh, so uh, actually, if you compare, it's quite the same. Okay, the uh, core course, the specialized courses, the center required courses are actually the same. Too many differences uh, between those yang tak tak nak pursue dengan LBS, dengan those yang nak pursue dengan LBS adalah it lies dekat you punya uh, Quranic language courses. Okay, so if you intend to pursue with your LBS degree in Gombak, then you have to complete up to uh, level 4 of uh, Arabic medium Quranic, uh, uh, level 4 Quranic uh, Arabic medium courses. But for that part, okay, on the registration of your uh, Quranic uh, Arabic medium courses, ni, I will explain later. All right. Okay, I will pass the floor back to Madam Farah to explain on the future in ICON. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Ms. Farhana. All right. Uh, this is uh, where you would make, you might ask that what going to be uh, your future in ICO once you graduate from CFS. So let's see. Next slide, please. All right. So we're going to have two pathway, uh, two streamline. Okay. The first one is single major stream. The second one is double degree lah, ataupun syariah degree. A single magistrate ni, Bachelor of Laws with Honours ataupun LLB. Yeah? And the double degree streamline is known, uh, is called as Bachelor of Laws Syariah, eh? also with Honours. Okay, right after you complete the four years here, uh, you're going to uh, graduate from ICOS and proceed with Chambri. Yeah? Chambri macam practical lah. Uh, eh? For nine months eh? before uh, you being uh, right after you complete your nine month chamber in chamber, you'll be called to the bar. Eh? You'll be called to the Malaysian bar, and uh, finally, this is the end result. Lah. Uh, okay, you will be practicing, inshallah, you'll be practicing uh, as advocate and solicitor in Malaysian court. This is what most of your seniors, lah. Ramai uh, dekat luar, eh? I, I, you, and we are proud uh, to tell you and to um, welcome you to join the club. Uh, ramai IIUM uh, lawyers, eh, alumni kita yang telah berjaya, yang telah menjadi politician, mufti, yang ramai. Okay? So if you, uh, one of them lah, if you manage and able to take this challenge to complete your undergraduate degree, yeah, 
in Bachelor of Law Honours LLB. Uh, this is where you would end up to. And if you are uh, uh, taking a uh, uh, double degree stream, uh, so you have to continue one year lah, tambah lagi setahun untuk syariah degree. After you complete four years, so fifth year, you can buat satu degree, double degree syariah. Eh? And uh, right after completion, you'll be practicing as syariah lawyers in the syariah court advocate solicitor in Malaysia. Civil court. Sebenarnya banyak lagi, banyak lagi. There are actually variety, endless list of uh, legal careers uh, pathway. Eh? It will be explained by our brother Ivan eh? a bit later on. Next. Okay, pass to the floor to uh, Miss Farhana. Okay, it's me again. All right. So next, uh, for my part, uh, I'll be explaining on Quranic language Arabic medium registration process. Okay, as I mentioned to you previously, if you intend to pursue with LLBS degree in Gombak later on, okay, you will have to undergo this process. Okay, Quranic language Arabic medium registration process. Next slide. Okay, so for the registration of, of Quranic language Arabic medium courses, okay, students who are interested to stream into LLB Sharia program in iCall, as previously explained by Medium Farah, okay, you will have to complete uh, Quranic language Arabic medium up to LQM 0844. Okay, basically level four of Quranic language Arabic medium course. Okay, level four Quranic language Arabic medium course. Okay, so registration obtain minimum B plus for Arabic language in SPM. So you know your result and you know the grade of your Arabic language in SPM. So if you obtain the minimum of B plus, so you dapat B plus, A, A plus, A minus, for example, then you are eligible to register for this Quranic language Arabic medium courses. Okay, so that is the general rule. Okay, for exception, okay, we still open, okay, for you to pursue with your LLBS degree, okay, if, let's say, for example, uh, during this first semester, okay, you are placed in LQM 0823, English medium, uh, English medium of uh, the Quranic language course, okay, you are eligible to register for Quranic language, Arabic medium, okay, provided that you score at least A minus, okay, at least A minus, meaning that you score A or A minus in the first semester, but with the recommendation from our medium HOD. Okay, so for this group of students, okay, for that number three part, okay, the exception part, for this group of students, okay, meaning that uh, firstly, you have to make sure, okay, that uh, you are registered uh, in LQM 0823 English medium during your first semester. And then secondly, you have to obtain uh, either A or A minus, okay, in that particular subject. Okay, and then in your second semester, then you will be placed in the level two of Quranic language Arabic medium course. And then in your semester three, you will be placed in uh, level three Quranic language Arabic medium course. And then you have to complete your level four of Quranic language Arabic medium course in our main campus Omba. Okay. So that is the exception applicable uh, for those who are placed in LQM 0823. Okay, then um, for this part, I think um, we have to wait for your result first during this uh, first semester. Okay, uh, let's say if you are eligible, uh, then we will discuss further lah on the next process. Okay, and then uh, all students uh, who are eligible and interested to register for Quranic language Arabic medium courses, you are required to fill in the Quranic Language Arabic Medium Registration Google Form, okay, letters by Tuesday, 10th of August, 2021. Okay, we will give you the link letter, but you have to know that uh, your registration for this uh, particular subject is not automatic. Okay, let's say, for example, if your result is A plus or A, it does not mean that you are automatically registered for Quranic Language Arabic Medium courses, okay? Uh, not automatic registration, but you have to apply. So how to apply? You have to fill in this Google form. Okay, and then we give you approximately like maybe like seven days, okay, approximately for you to think, okay, whether you would like to register uh, for this uh, Arabic medium uh, Quranic language course or not. Okay, and if you already make up your mind, okay, please fill in the form, okay, because we need to process your application. Okay, so next uh, you are reminded 
to always check uh, your course registration slip, CRS, be, uh, especially before the first day of the lecture. Okay, because why you need to check your CRS? Because you know lah what are the subjects are registered for you in that particular semester. Okay, so reminder again, application made after the deadline will not be entertained. Okay, we will not be uh, entertain any application made after the deadline. Okay, because we give you quite an ample time to think. Okay, kalau you are interested, eligible and interested, uh, please register using that Google form. Okay, and then after we receive all your application, okay, we will conduct an interview to uh, shortlisted students, okay, for those who are eligible and interested in the first week of the semester. So I will inform uh, you later the date of the interview. All right, next slide. Okay, next uh, I'll be explaining on uh, the academic requirements for graduation. Okay, this one very important, you have to know as well. Next slide. Okay, uh, for graduation requirements, okay, you have to obtain a minimum CGPA of 2.5 and above. CGPA, uh, the accumulative of your result in the first uh, semester, second semester and third semester, you have to make sure that you obtain a minimum CGPA of 2.5 before you can be admitted as undergrad students in call. Okay, and then secondly, you have to make sure that you completed all specialized core courses, center required courses, as well as language courses. Okay, but uh, because you have to remember that your entry to the uh, Ahmad Ibrahim Kuliah of Law in Gombak, okay, it's not automatic. It does not mean that when you are uh, being admitted here as CFS IIM students, then you are automatic the undergrad students in uh, I call as well. It does not mean so, okay. You have to struggle as well, okay. You have to obtain at least 2.5 and then you have to complete all the courses mentioned. Okay, failure to obtain the minimum required CGPA may prevent you from being admitted to the main campus. Okay, next slide. Okay, for uh, next, I will uh, briefly explain on the cost performance evaluation. Okay, for your cost performance evaluation, uh, the grade obtained for each subject is based on the coursework and end of semester examination. We will add both your coursework, okay, together with the result or together with the marks of your end of semester examination. Okay, coursework ni is also known as CAM. Okay, you will get uh, yourself familiar with this term better. Okay, your CAM together with the marks of your end of semester examination, we will add together. Okay, and then you will get the grade of that particular subject. Okay, so the end of semester examination uh, shall carry a weight ranging from 20% to 40%, uh, depending on the nature of the course. Okay, depending on the nature of the subject. Uh, the some subject, uh, uh, for example, introduction to law. Okay, coursework 60%. End of semester examination, 40%. So it depends on the nature of the subject. You will have to check later. Okay, and then uh, for example, introduction to legal skills. Uh, we do not have final examination. Okay, we do not have end of semester examination. So the grade of the subject is actually uh, totally depending on your continuous assessment. Okay, next. So the lowest grade uh, for a clear pass is C. So meaning that in order for you to pass that subject, you have to obtain at least C. So, kalau bawah daripada C, meaning that uh, you fail that subject. Okay? So, if a grade of D, E, or F is obtained, uh, students must repeat the subject in the following semester or other semesters as advised by your academic advisor. So, uh, we will give you advice, okay, whether you have to repeat the subject in the following semester or other semesters. So, it depends on your study plan. Alright? So, a student is allowed to repeat a Fail course for only two times. Okay, next. Okay, this is your grading chart. Okay, to know the grade of a particular subject. Okay, like I mentioned to you previously, we will add your CAM coursework together with your end of semester examination. Then you will get your mark. Okay, yeah, uh, the range 80 to 100. Okay, you will receive or you will obtain A for that particular subject. Uh, 75 to 79, A minus. 70 to 74, B plus. 65 to uh, 69, B. 60 to 64 B minus, 55 to 59 C plus. Okay, that one adalah range untuk uh, pass for you to pass the subject. Okay, the rest to uh, start daripada 49 until 0 tu adalah fail. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, 45 to 49 B, uh, 40 to 44 D minus, 35 to 39 E, 0 to 34 F. 
Okay, next, uh, eligibility for entry to examination. Okay, examination, uh, sorry, uh, if you are registered for that particular subject, okay, when you are officially registered for that particular subject, then you are eligible uh, for entry to examination as well as at the same time, you have to observe your class attendance as well. Because uh, in order for you to seek for the final examination, not only that you are officially registered in such a course, okay, secondly, okay, you have to make sure that you have fulfilled the required 80% of attendance attendance and other requirements. So kalau you cannot fulfill this part, okay, you may be barred from examination. But next slide. Okay. Now, barring from examinations. So, barring from examination, uh, it means that uh, you will not be allowed, okay, to seek uh, for the examination of that particular subject, okay, if you fail to attend classes more than 20%, okay, and with the recommendation by the head of the department, okay, if you fail to attend classes more than 20%, okay, then you will be barred from sitting the yeah, examination. Okay, next. Okay, so if you are barred from that particular examination, you will uh, obtain grade Y, Y equivalent to F, okay, so you have to repeat the same people in the repeat the same people in the following semester okay next okay so for your class attendance okay you um sorry for your class attendance uh, it must be of at least 80 percent okay as i mentioned to you previously in order for you to sit uh, for the end of semester examination of that particular subject you have to attend uh, your classes at least 80 percent okay so uh, try as much as you can not to absent from any classes okay so if uh, you are sick, for example, you have valid reasons for not attending the class, uh, for example, you are sick, uh, you have vaccination appointment, for example, so what you have to do, firstly, please immediately inform your respective lecturer, okay, please immediately inform your respective lecturer, and then secondly, you have to provide proof or evidence of your absence, contohnya ada MC, for example, ataupun you screenshot the vaccination appointment uh, for uh, us to consider your absence, okay. Next, uh, issuance of warning letter. Um, warning letters will be issued in the following situation. Okay, if absent for five contact hours without any valid reason, okay, meaning that MIA, we do not know whether you are sick or you have any problems, but you do not attend the classes, okay, so uh, we will issue you the first uh, warning letter, 10% to 19% of absence, okay, and then recommendation to be barred from sitting for final examination if you are absent for more than 20%, meaning that the process is like this, if you are not attending the class, okay, if you are absent, we will issue you first the warning letter, okay, and then if no improvement with regard to your attendance, still attend classes lagi, we will issue you the warning letter. All right. Okay. I think that's all from me. I will pass the floor to Madam Farah to explain on the conduct of class uh, this semester. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Farhana. Okay, let's come to uh, how uh, about uh, attending class during the RTL, uh, remote uh, teaching and learning. So let's see. Next slide, please. Okay, the first one. Uh, at DLS, the mode of teaching and learning will be uh, two form. Yeah, ada dua cara. Yang pertama, synchronous. Uh, yang kedua, asynchronous. Uh, ni perbeza dia. Kalau synchronous ni, uh, the lecturer, respective lecturer, will give the link to the class and it will be uh, shared prior before the class. So, dalam jadual, katalah kelas lagi pukul 8, kan? So, you have to stand by. Uh, you will receive the link uh, for uh, the platform for the class to be conducted beforehand or during. Uh, pukul 8, pukul 8. Ada yang 8, minit. Uh, so, you kena stand by lah before uh, and alert. Pukul berapa kelas, pukul berapa nak kena uh, buka link, kan? Um, Okay, so this will be uh, agreed lah as your lecturer that can bagitahu lah sama ada your class will be conducted via WhatsApp or via Telegram or via yeah, Google Classrooms and that will be uh, informed uh, prior by your respective lecturer. Okay, kalau it's synchronous classes ni, uh, it doesn't happen 
uh, pada waktu kelas. Uh, dia macam contoh. Uh, dia kata, okay, um, minggu ni Madam nak uh, awak cari case law, cari statute the legislation through social media, cari legal news. Uh, how many? Two articles, two cases, then I want you to share and upload sekian-sekian uh, dekat uh, dalam GC ke, dalam Telegram ke. So that is uh, happen outside the the uh, live section. Yeah? Uh, so that is where, uh, where you uh, get uh, learning uh, asynchronously. Okay, number three. Students are required to turn on your camera for at least the first five minutes. Ini adalah satu adab lah. Uh, adab kita sebagai pelajar. Uh, kita kena tunjuk lah. Kita tunjuk yang kita nak belajar, nak menuntut ilmu. At least show your uh, your face for the first few minutes. Eh? Uh, so tak adalah uh, lecturer awak bercakap dengan dinding kan. Uh, tak adalah kosong aja. At least say hi. Assalamualaikum madam. Assalamualaikum sir. Uh, this is me. Hi good morning. Uh, so do your part lah. In greeting. Uh, your lecturers. Uh, itu adat kita nak menuntut ilmu. Okay. Uh, so uh, this would be as uh, as your proof of attendance lah. Uh, if there is any issue later on, kita tanya eh, student ni kenapa tak respon? Media panggil. Brother uh, apa? Hakim. Hakim uh, senyap aja. Kan? Uh, ni ada kelas ke tak ada kelas ke? Ada ke tidak kita tak tahu. So if you respond, if you open your camera so we know that you have approve the attendance uh, before class you know you are in okay all right then if the student if you are not able to join the class at any particular time please immediately inform your lecturer uh, so kena kena bagi tahu lah madam saya tak apa sihat ni uh, can i excuse myself oh madam saya ada vaccination uh, appointment so i might not be able for the first hour i'll be late apa apa lah okay you have to inform uh, you are responsible and accountable to inform your lecturer. So be in touch with your lecturer so they know lecture your lecturers know your where about. Okay, this is one also of your one of the adab uh, class ethics. Among others, uh, ada adab yang lain. Be punctual. You need to observe your punctuality. Uh, pay attention and take notes during the class. Ani uh, biasalah adab uh, seorang pelajar kan. Uh, jangan jangan dengar duduk je tak pula kita off uh, apa mute. Uh, off camera, tidur. Uh, tak nak macam tu. This is not the spirit. This is not the student what we want. Student that we want. We want student to be uh, disciplined, to be very uh, committed. Yeah? You nak berjaya kan? Uh, you want to be khalifah. Uh, so you this do what, what, what it takes. Eh? Uh, discipline kena ada. Adab kena jaga. Hubungan dengan Allah kena jaga. Okay? So kena ada effort lah. Kalau kita nak jaga kejayaan tu datang bergolek. So you student, so buat. Uh, you have to be in control of your students' life. Okay, so take note. Jangan lupa pay attention, focus. If your lecturer tanya soalan, any question, jangan diam aja. Please do ask question. Appreciate your lecturer. So, pada bagi ilmu, uh, you respond lah. Okay. Uh, and then observe the student dress code. Dress code uh, yang ada dalam you punya admission kit. Eh? Buku uh, ta'aruf tu. Uh, you dapat kan? Uh, online tak aruf kit boleh tengok lah. Eh? Uh, most uh, but yang tu kita punya dress code when you are in uh, having a physical class. Okay, uh, as where we are now in uh, having a remote RTL kan. So uh, you need to dress uh, properly lah. Properly means it doesn't have to be of a formal but at least presentable proper lah. Uh, yang yang sisters uh, tutup aurat, eh? jaga aurat. Make sure you cover uh, your 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 hairs and uh, put your tudung eh, nicely, your hijab eh, uh, and follow the IIM standard student dress code. Eh. Give due respect to lecturers and staff. Ah, uh, inilah. Eh, please respect your lecturers. Eh, jaga jaga dalam um, dalam kelas. Or if you were to uh, text your lecturers, ask tanya dulu. Boleh ke meja? May I know what times your bell? May I know what time you can be consulted? May I have your time? Uh, so you kena uh, jaga adab. Uh, jaga adab. Kena tahu lah pukul berapa boleh text ke tak boleh text ke madam. Okay. So uh, we can have a, a good relationship eh, between a student and teachers. So give salam to everyone. Uh, bila masuk kelas, make sure you bagi salam. Assalamualaikum madam. Assalamualaikum kawan-kawan. Kan? Uh, so yes, that is the one of also one of the adab lah. Ethics before. Uh, kita uh, menuntut ilmu. Speak to your lecturers using proper words and proper manners. Uh, so you watch out your language lah. Itu uh, saja. Eh, cakap dengan bahasa yang elok. Eh. 
uh, for the respect lah, for the respect of ilmu dan kelas kan. Uh, okay, this is uh, online adab uh, for student following teleconference platform. Ah, uh, ni macam kita sekarang ni lah, kan? Uh, kalau kita guna social apa ni platform uh, Google Classroom, Jimmy ataupun Zoom, okay? So make sure you ada enter your profile. You come with the profile with real name. Ah, uh, tak nak ada nama Kiko, Hero, Batman. Ah, uh, tak nak nama-nama uh, uh, Korean ke artis tak nak. Okay, so you representing your self ah kita nak leaders kita nak khalifah you kena be accountable who you are ah kan your parent dah bagi nama elok-elok okay so uh, make sure your name tally dengan madam punya lecturer awak punya class list ah nanti tak ada tak mengaku ni bukan student madam ni ah nama apa ni dalam uh, group ni nama plek-plek tak nak eh sama juga profile pun tak nak gambar kucing eh please letak gambar you you all sendiri ah kita nak tahu student kita Uh, kita tak nak anonymous <laughs> student ya. Yeah? So uh, again, please make sure that you have your profile name, your real name, it's your real name and together with your metric number and then prepare your material beforehand sebelum kelas macam biasalah. Uh, macam sekolah dulu kan. Uh, prepare notes, uh, tahu dah ni course outline, nak prepare apa minggu ni kan. Uh, nanti extra awak bagi uh, teaching plan. Dia akan beritahu dah minggu ni kita akan belajar apa. So you prepare, study sikit, okay, take note. Uh, okay, prepare nak tanya soalan apa. That will be one of the way to be an excellent student. Be early. Ah, uh, ni lagi satu contoh lah. Uh, kena kena um, apa? Masuk kelas, masuk dalam teleconference platform tu awal lah. Ah, uh, lima minit sebelum kelas boleh dah masuk. Ah, uh, kan? Okay, get dressed in formal class attire. Ah, uh, ni kalau ah uh, if we have physical class, yeah, kena you have to dress formally lah according to the student dress code. Inform family or housemate that you will be on virtual call. Ah, uh, ini ada satu courtesy. Ah, uh, precaution juga if you were online. Ah, uh, so make sure you punya study pod kan. Ah, uh, kalau dekat dapur ke dekat mana mana lah. Ah, uh, so you make sure you let your members of the family say I'm going to have class. So please, ah, uh, if you uh, can have a uh, privacy lah. Yeah, so not to be disturbed. Yeah, whatsoever. I'm sure you can arrange that and you are uh, familiar with that. Okay, if not, then you have to get yourself familiar with it. So upon entry, bila kita nak masuk, switch on your camera macam tadi kan for at least first five minutes uh, on the camera. Okay, say hi to your madam, say hi to your sir. Okay, it's me. Uh, introduce yourself. You kena, kena aktif lah dalam kelas. Okay, identify yourself. Let's sure tanya. Sebelum tanya dah jawab dah. Ha, dah tahu dah. Okay, that would be a good student. Uh, during the meeting, ask the consent before recording any of the session, uh, before posting any part of the uh, session. Okay. Instructor will be recording. Okay, our uh, this is the practice of uh, our department. Uh, if we were to have a class, eh, uh, a session via Gmeet or uh, Zoom, uh, we're going to have the session recording, eh, recorded for every session, lah, for university documentation purposes. Okay, even though the chat. Ah, uh, so kalau nak chat, <laughs> kan, dekat chat box tu tulis yang lelo, yeah, kita kita document, eh. Ah, uh, this will be recorded. So watch your mind, your language. Um, if you need to leave the session, okay, please as uh, notify your lecturer. Uh, today's got chat box to madam, sir. I want to excuse myself for two minutes, three minutes, okay. So make sure your lecturers in the know lah. All right. Next. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, this is the most exciting part. I'm sure uh, many of you are waiting for this. Uh, how are you going to participate and to be active in the academic based class of MILAC? So I pass the floor to our brother Ridwan bin Saleh. Thank you very much, Madam Farahiza. Um, before I begin, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is uh, Muhammad Ridwan bin Saleh. Uh, for this uh, academic year, inshallah, I'll be the advisor for Law Student Society, or we are very much known as MILEX. So if you see in this picture, this is something happened two years ago, way before the COVID-19 pandemic, where we can gather and we can see one another and when we can have fun seeing your friend. Now, I, I'm very happy to see you interacting with your friends in the chat room, in the, uh, in the live chat, in the YouTube because that's the only way that how we can interact and communicate now. So we have to make do and 
we must we must use this platform as much as possible because we don't know when we we'll, when we will get back our normal normal norm or maybe there will be no more normal norm that we have known before so basically learning law is never a dull and boring uh, journey it's it's never only reading books memorize cases or staying 24 hours in the library no becoming a successful law student means you are a well balanced students whereby you are good in your academic and you are also good in your co curricular activities and that's why like madam farahiza mentioned in the beginning we also have the academic base or the department based society which is law student society now i'm sure by now you are wondering where how to become a member so uh, i'm happy to announce that all of you are automatically a member of this uh, society because uh, all law students are basically part of this family okay so this is our family law student society now uh, the question comes into your mind why you should be actively involved in this milex activities there are a lot of the, the list goes on and on but i just want to highlight a few because while doing activities while uh, conducting program and so on it will be uh, it will give you a platform to understand law better to have fun while studying to release your stress to distress yourself okay and at the same time it will allow you to make friends like i've mentioned earlier the best way for you to communicate or interact with your friends nowadays is via communication medium such as whatsapp chat room and so on so uh, by joining this social uh, this uh, society it will give you more reason to communicate with your friends and of course i'm sure many of you come from various background from various schools uh, university seems a different and strange place it's not like schools and so on so this is the best platform where you can make friends in fact um, maybe you can uh, found your best friend here in this society and previously we also do enjoy trips and visit to courts to parliament to the uh, state legislative assemblies to the prison to the uh, various government agencies so but unfortunately due to this covid-19 uh, this have to be uh, put on hold and of course whether online or physical program by joining a uh, programs or activities organized by milex it will automatically will come increase or enhance your communication skills and ultimately it will help to build your self confidence now like i've mentioned earlier a good law student a good lawyer is a well balanced person you must not only good in your academic but you also must know how to carry yourself how to communicate how to be confident at proper times and uh, place lah of course okay now um uh, this is this is your senior they don't have a organization chat anymore but rather they have some kind like um corporate video so uh, let's watch this a bit so that you can get a glimpse of what is happening in milex they have various bureaus uh, you see this is the is taking selfie and then they also have sports bureau don't worry we are law students it doesn't mean that we don't do sports okay although we are not very good in at the center but we do still have opportunities for students to play sports and do recreational activities so we have uh oh, baling bola tennis pula so oh, basically this is the office the masinan office okay so this uh, we have the welfare bureau that always take care of the students if they have any concern if they have any issues if there's any death uh, this that is your textbook for introduction to islamic law state line so that's your mc eh, by the way <laughs> so this is something that the new norm has taught us we no longer have a a4 paper organization chat we can have a corporate video combined with your creativity the limit there is no limit to our achievement inshallah so we have a lot of bureaus actually the, the video is 3 minutes but if you want to see the full um, this is only the sneak peek or the preview you can of course follow uh, milex instagram you all are share kan naila the the milex ID official ID and so on. Ah, ada ada. Ada ah, nanti minta kat kat nak dah ni. Okay, let's move on. Now, uh, to become 
one of the members in the video just now, you need to win certain position. And how to become this Milek Shura Council members, they will of course be voting during the annual general meeting where the seniors will table and present all their achievements, all their programs, all their activities in the past academic year. And then uh, they will also conduct voting. And then you have to uh, do your manifesto. All students leaders out there, yang pernah jadi ketua pengawas, ketua pengawas pusat sumber, ketua pembimbing rakan sebaya dan sebagainya. This is actually an opportunity for you to develop your leadership skills. In fact, not only those who have uh, who have experience, for those who never join any society, for those who never become or hold any post in school, this is also open to you. This is the platform, Bila Lagi. So this is open to everyone. This is, um, this is actually uh, the biggest opportunity that enable you to learn how to become a leader, how to conduct a program, how to, um, uh, how to build self-confidence and so on. So we'll be having interview session and then we'll be having the AGM, of course, online and uh, the date for the AGM uh, will be notified by the department later. We have yet to receive the timetable or the schedule for the AGM, but later you will be informed formally by the department. So those who are interested to become the president, the vice president, the bureau head of bureaus and so on, you can always join. Kalau nak cuba try test pun boleh juga. Okay. So that's about Milek Shura Council. Now, I want to highlight several programs that have been conducted by the Milek Shura Council, uh, by Milek uh, in the last academic year. COVID-19 was never a hindrance, was never a barrier for them to become active in their society. They have conducted several activities. They have conducted online talk with lawyers, okay, how to become a good lawyer, what can I do with a law degree? I'm sure a lot of you are asking the same question right now. What can you do after your four or five years of studies? Lepas COVID-19 ni, ada kerja jadi lawyer lagi ke? Uh, so I'm sure all of you have that kind of question. And Milex as a platform uh, to conduct activity, they provide this kind of bridge between the students and the department, the students and the industry as well. So we try to make your study of law is more than what you get, uh, sorry, more than lecture in class, okay? Um, they also have conducted this uh, program called LexMood, okay? This is actually an introductory program where uh, by now I'm sure you don't know what mood is, okay? But becoming a law student, there are two things that are very close to us. Number one is debate, number two is mood. Uh, so, so this is actually an exposure for you to, to, to join this mooting later in the kuliah. We don't have mooting club here, but the uh, Milek Society, they took this opportunity to expose students. What does it mean by moot? Moot is actually some kind of presentation of submissions in the higher or in the higher courts, uh, the Court of Appeal, ke, the International Court of Arbitration and so on. So actually, people from ICOL, they are well known for this. They have gone to Oxford, they have gone to various competition, JASUP competition, International um, Criminal Court of Justice mood competition. Even we have mood competition for Sharia as well. So this is actually a good opportunity for you to develop your speaking skills. And of course, those who are very knowledgeable, very skillful in mooting, you will be very, very, very marketable after you graduate. Okay, and not forgetting recreational activity, sport activities. Milex also try to play their part in make, in ensuring all students are safe and healthy at home uh, during conduct virtual run. I'm not sure how many participated, but I'm sure um, it is something uh, something different. Or is not uh, it is something that can be done anywhere, anytime. So this is a good initiative or effort done by the previous uh, tenure of Milex uh, Society. And of course, they have conducted various, various degree, oh, sorry, various forum talks and so on, on the legal profession, okay, on the legal services and so on, on ethics. So this is another program, uh, Lex Forum, Law Degree, A Guaranteed Future. Uh, not only that, they also have fun, fun program. Uh, bukan program belajar je semua. Eh. They also have non-academic based, non-legal based program. For example, this they have they, they have conducted this Lex video competition, a day in my life as a CFS student. Uh, so you can go and watch their submission in YouTube. And let's see how your senior, abang senior, kakak senior, 
live uh, in CFS previously. And MILEX also have been known for conducting big or major programs at the center. And one of the biggest, I would say the biggest uh, program conducted by MILEX last semester or last academic year was this, which is the mock parliament. Actually, the picture where the people gather, that's, that happened before COVID-19, obviously. And the one on your right side, uh, the one in purple and pink and white is the one done online via Discord. Okay, so what is uh, mock parliament? Mock parliament is not like the one they have uh, out there, but it's rather opportunity for the society, for the clubs to express their concern on issues, on the various issues, suggestion to the administration. Uh, even the dean attended the session, even the top uh, management also attended the session so that they can listen directly from the student leaders. So this is one of the program at the center level conducted by SEC, but of course the, the champion is MILEX. Okay, so I would like to again congratulate MILEX on the, the, uh, the, the this program conducted, especially last academic year. Tapi nampak sedih sikit kan yang sebelah kiri tu ramai-ramai berkumpul. That is our Al Khawarizmi Hall. Uh, but on the right side is uh, our Al Khawarizmi online hall. Lah. Okay. Now, the students also very active in writing, reading and reading, uh, reading and writing activities. Becoming a law student, reading and writing is part and parcel of your bread and butter. You can never run away from reading. You can never run away from writing. Law students must have passion in these two. Okay, so Milex also have published several, I would say, uh, online publication that is called Lex Read. They have published, or if I'm not mistaken, three or four in the past semester, past academic year, where the authors are among the students themselves. You can send your, your formal kind of uh, writing, you can send your artistic writing, you can send any of your work to be published in this Lex Read. So this is also an opportunity for you to, 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 to write and to expose yourself to the world of writing. Okay, I do a few publication. Uh, this is on the frontliners and so on. So despite the fact that the student have been at home for quite some time, it doesn't mean that they don't do anything. They have been very active. Milex have been very active with various online programs and activities that have done before. Okay, next would be these two. This is actually one of the activity that we have missed for quite some time. This is the legal cater or mock trial. We have conducted several times before. Actually, this is the biggest program for law students, Benanya. But we, due to COVID-19, we have not done this for two semesters or for two years. Okay. Allah Allah. Nak tengok lagi kan? But uh, the thing is, uh, due to several restrictions and so on, we have to postpone and cancel this program. So this is a very unfortunate situation. Maybe in this tenure of 2021-2022, since we have to live with COVID, we have to live with the new norm, maybe we can make or brainstorm a new ways how we can have this legal sketch or mock trial online. Okay? Tak sangka eh, among law students ada yang pandai berlakon. Uh, ada yang pandai jadi lawyer, ada yang pandai jadi penjenayah. Okay, so this is actually a very interesting program. And if, if you notice, this is taken from Milex um, YouTube channel. In fact, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the full version is also available in the YouTube channel. So you can see what law students doing. Adi juga kelakar-kelakar, bukannya scary macam ni. So this is something that you can look forward. Maybe we can think of how to do this in the next semester. Okay, looks like professional kind of product. Again. So they have done very good things before. Now, um, that's all about MILEX. Let me repeat, for the annual general meeting, I will, uh, the department will announce the, will announce the notice later. And of course, you as a responsible member, you need to attend. You need to, if you are interested to join the administration or, or the top management or the Shura Council, please, Nominate yourself, fill in the form, okay, and try your luck. Uh, and we'll have the manifesto session, and then we'll have the voting session, and then let us continue to make your study, legal study here in CFS, as, as fun and joyous as possible. Although the fact that you are now at home, okay.
Now, uh, the last part that I'm going to talk with uh, to you today is about the legal career pathways. Although this seems very, very far away, you just started, you just embarked your first step into the foundation program, but it's never wrong to pick into the future. Let's us pick and take a look into what the future has to offer for you who join legal studies as your career pathways. Now, um, basically you have to spend your CFS in one year and then uh, your degree four years, four to five years, depends, okay? Uh, in general, whenever we talk about Career, legal career pathways, uh, it can either be purely legal or not very legal. Let us look into this. If you choose to, to go into the legal side of uh, the or pure legal career, you can either work in the legal services, in the courts, okay? You can become the officer of the court, becoming the deputy public prosecutor. You can become the federal counsel who work at the AG chambers, Jabatan Peguam Negara. You can also work at the Malaysian bar, the, uh, the, the body that govern or that take care of our profession. You can obviously become a legal practitioner or lawyers out there in hundreds of law firms available. If you, if you think that you want to become a business owner, you can also set your own law firm. It doesn't mean that you have to work with someone. You can also work in court. You can become the uh, assistant registrar. You can become the registrar or you can become the magistrate, in fact. So it depends on the, uh, the, the various, actually the, the, the scope of career for legal profession is limitless. This is the purely legal, uh, legal kind of career, okay? Uh, just to share, among my friends, I could say um, majority of them are practicing lawyers. And of course, most of them also are working in companies, legal advisors, in various organizations, multinational companies, and so on. And there are also people who join education, like me, Sister Fahana, Madam Farah, Madam Nina, and all the members of the department. And of course, there are also people who don't really uh, do law, but later on, the knowledge of law is very, very much relevant to them. For example, if you want to do human uh, resource, if you want to become a manager one day, if you want to become a corporate one day, legal degree is something versatile. There is no single profession that, um, there is no single job that legal degree is not suitable for you to use, except medical. Lah. Uh, medical and engineering, jangan pula nak masuk Dewan Bedah, buat law degree, eh? that's that's very highly inappropriate. So, so basically, whenever we talk about it's, it's never wrong if you want to look into the future because this will be your motivation. I know it's difficult for you to study at home. I know it's very difficult to study with your siblings all around you. Maybe if you have non, not very conducive work, uh, place at home. But please use this, put this as your motivation, as your ambition, as your, how can I say, your, your target one day so that you will always keep your motivation and at the end of the day, your mental health also will be very good and you'll be happy at all time. Uh, so the, these are among the things that you can do with your legal degree later on. So that would be all from us. Okay, so these are the members of the department and we just have uh, one announcement here from the ITD tech tip. Is Madam Nina around? Yes, uh, yes. Do you mind to explain this a bit to the student, Madam Nina? Oh, okay. So basically, uh, every student uh, will be given uh, a live IUM account. Okay. So you can win a kind account too. Um, I'm not sure which uh, the company that dapatkan password dengan uh, username. Maybe you can ask the um, apa ni, committee. So who is eligible? Active student and staff of IUM, graduated student or resigned staff will be in uh, graduated students or resigned staff will be ineligible for this account. So the uh, the current active student, they are eligible for uh, this IUM uh, live IUM Microsoft account. Okay. So what are the benefits? Student and staff will get an email account and will be eligible to download Microsoft Office 365, use online services and other Microsoft products for free. Okay, so rugi lah kalau awak tak guna. So try to, um, ah, here is the, is the steps. Eh? Left I have email self-registration. You go to I maklum, my service, Office 365 self-registration to register. Okay, and then you reset uh, your password there. And then you, you can follow the um, steps or procedure. And then kalau, uh, if you fail to, to download ataupun ada problem, 
you can always contact uh, IUM ITD. Okay. So now everything is at, at your fingertips. You nak cari case ke? Uh, you want to go to? You want to go watch um proceeding in e court now? Nowadays they they are all available. So try to explore our uh, IUM library website. Yeah. Um. Uh, 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 even they have a social media account. Okay, library, library, I have a social media account. And you can also access cases outside Malaysia. Yeah. So uh, we try to provide you with the um, best facilities that we, that we could offer for you to, to learn uh, remotely. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all. Can uh, you screenshot a couple of to to see steps? Ni. Uh, I think now we can open to answer to any questions, if any. Are there soalan ke? Uh, yes, uh, the questions uh, we already posted in the chat, the Zoom. Okay, there are, I think, ada berapa 14 questions. Uh, siapa nak jawab dulu? Uh, yang mana yang kita start ni? Okay, first question, only writing will be tested during EPT. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, it can be written form, uh, but whether it's comprehension or AC writing, maybe that you can get the detail later during the EPT briefing, inshallah. The format too, we, 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 are, we are not uh, in the know. So, we will tell the briefing lah, daripada ELD, English Language Department, boleh tanya ya. Number two is APT compulsory. Hmm, Your that? APT, uh, boleh serida je? Ah, sila Miss Fahana. Ah, advice. Okay, the question is APT compulsory. Okay, basically APT for this semester is not compulsory because your placement for uh, Quranic language subject is based on your uh, Arabic result in SPM. Yes. Okay. Basically, the the APT itself is based on the placement happen. Uh, it's a reflection of your SPM result, okay? Yes. Uh, next question, only SPM result. How about IGCSE result? We, 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 we give this to Madam Farah. Lah. Yes. As uh, SPM and uh, IGCSE uh, is blend, eh? uh, so the result uh, is expected in uh, Malaysian University, but with the Grading, kita kena check lah. We have to cross check. Uh, sama ada uh, equivalent ke tidak nak grade A dengan A plus. Uh, so, to know whether you are eligible uh, for Arabic. Eh? Sama ada that one we have, we have to uh, check eh? with um, departments, other departments in university and come back to you later. Yeah, maybe you can uh, reconfirm the answer for this question during the EPT briefing as well. Yes. Uh, yes, next yes. question would be, kalau tak ambil bahasa Arab masa secondary, tak boleh ambil syariah. Okay, uh, let me respond to this briefly. Actually, the period of study in CFS is only one year, three semesters. Okay, if the student started the uh, Arabic language, uh, if you notice just now, the uh, Arabic language must, uh, you must complete up to level four. So meaning in first semester, you'll have to uh, take level two, second semester, level three, and the last semester, level four. But we try to open a window for students who, who do not actually uh, place in Arabic level 2, uh, Quranic language, Arabic medium level 2, okay? But uh, I, I believe this question is untuk student yang mungkin tak ada basic langsung bahasa Arab. Um, you will be placed in the first level English medium, of course. But uh, try dulu, tengok dulu. I cannot confirm you whether you can do it or not. But uh, maybe later you can come to see the department again. Maybe we can have a discussion on this issue. But to 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 guarantee that you can take Sharia, uh, I cannot do that. But we'll see your your situation first because uh, you will and maybe the the possibility is that you have to do more language courses in the kuliah later. So that is something that we are trying to avoid. Okay. Uh, next question, Madam, if I get A for Arabic and want to pursue Sharia, still kena masuk kelas ke to complete the level ke? Oh, banyak ke? Yes, who would like to respond to this? Miss Fahana ke? Okay, uh, okay, okay, I will respond to this question. Uh, Madam, if I get A for Arabic and want to pursue Sharia, still kena masuk kelas ke? Uh, okay, A here you have to emphasize whether you got uh, A plus 
or A or A minus. Okay, because if you obtain A plus uh, for your Arabic uh, SPM result, you will be placed in uh, level three Arabic medium. Okay, if you obtain A or A minus, you will be placed in level two Arabic medium. Okay, but firstly, what you have to do, you have to fill in the form first. Okay, we process your application. So, jawapan dia basically, uh, yes, can you complete uh, the level? Yes, right? because even if you score A for Arabic during the SPM, you are only placed at level 3. three. So, you have at least level 4 to complete, uh, level 3 and level 4 to complete. Because, of course, the level of Quranic language in the center is uh, higher than the what that you are attending in school. The next question, what is the difference between contract uh, con contact hour and credit hour? Oh, sorry. Uh, Miss... Miss Apa Brady Ridwan lah. Silakan. <laughs> Ke Madam Nina nak jawab Madam Nina ah. je. Okey, um soalan ni. Contact and credit. Okey, oh. nama one contact hour is uh, hours um measured uh, the the load measured when you are learning um that particular subject. Hmm. So kalau ITL for contact hours, meaning uh, for hours per week, yeah, kita kira per week. Yeah. While well, credit hour is hours given, credited for um, to you for attending that subject. But in the IIUM, the, the hours are equivalent. So for contact hours sama dengan for um, credit hour. Yeah. Okay. Especially at our department lah. Uh, uh -huh. the, the so uh, kalau uh, satu, se, apa ni, um, one week, Let's say this semester you are taking five subjects. Okay, um, campur 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 berapa jam? Uh, 24 credit, uh, contact hour. Okay, 24 credit contact hour means 24 jam dalam seminggu awak akan pergi kelas. It's not like your secondary school lah, secondary school kan different. So maybe one day you you will only have to attend uh, four to six hours class. Yeah. Okay, uh, so yang nak kira pointer semua tu kita akan guna credit yeah. hour. If I may add, just to simply put contact hour and credit hour, credit hour is the weightage of the, of the course because it will be included in the calculation of your GPA and CGPA. While on the other hand, the contact hour is how many hours do you see the lecturer or how many hours the class will be conducted every week. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, I think question number Sorry, seven. But, uh, yes. Uh, May I read the question? Yes, please, please. Okay, question number seven. I'm so, I'm sorry, but can anyone please tell me how a synchronization class will be done? Uh, if I may respond to this, this is what explained by Madam Farah earlier. Synchronous and asynchronous classes refers to synchronous classes that happen at uh, at one time. For example, our live session here. That this is actually a synchronous session where you can have direct interaction between the audience and the uh, teacher or the presenter. While on the other hand, asynchronous means maybe your teacher give you um, reading material for you to read, maybe they give you video to watch and answer certain question. So meaning the asynchronous uh, refers to the teaching and learning process that does not happen at the same time. Uh, their teacher tak ada dekat situ. Uh, but the process happen, take place, but not uh, everyone at the same time. Okay, so that's the difference between synchronous and asynchronous. Yes. Assalamualaikum and good evening. If we pass the minimum requirements for CGPA that we are confirmed, can further law or it depends on the quota? Madam Nina, I think this is in your, your part just now, kan? Uh, if minimum we pass the minimum requirement for CGPA that we are confirmed, can further law... Uh, if you pass 2.5, uh, if you get a CGPA 2.5 and above, you will be... Confirm lah masuk ke uh, Ahmad Ibrahim Kuliah of Law in Gombak. So daripada gate of garden dah masuk garden. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much Melanina. Interview for Arabic medium will be in Arabic language. Uh, Miss Fahana. Uh, yes, eh, tak ada lah. Tak, tak, tak. Uh, interview will be conducted uh, in English. Okay, basically English medium. Tapi maybe lah during the session of the interview, we will ask you to speak uh, in Arabic, just uh, for introduction, the maybe not just uh, to see your Arabic language proficiency. Tapi the interview itself, the interview session itself, it will be conducted in English. Okay. 
Yes, because we actually, we want to see your commitment. We want to see whether you have what it takes to pursue Sharia later on in the main campus. Um, next question. Assalamualaikum. When we will be given the entry exam timetable? Do you mean the APT, EPT ke apa ni? Entry exam. Hmm, EPT. Okay, EPT lah kot. I think it has been scheduled kan? On the 5th August, yeah. Uh, this Thursday kan? Hmm. Yes, this Thursday. You need to check with the committee because if you miss, you will not be uh, eligible to be exempted. So please check the timetable uh, accurately. For the law study expenses, how much do we have to prepare for the budget? I mean for the books and all related stuff. Um, Madam Farah ke? Uh, budget ya, eh? budget. As a student ke? Sister Naila boleh ke? How much uh, roughly it cost you? <laughs> um, I think roughly for budget untuk buku, Uh, setakat ni all the materials for untuk belajar lah usually dah prepared dah by our lecturer for example the slides but the books will be rec uh, recommended uh, however uh, usually macam we all semua dapat uh, cari sendiri the ebook version so we don't have to uh, pay lah but for those yang prefer hard copy uh, they can uh, sendiri sendiri lah beli but uh, the textbook around 100 plus lah one textbook hmm. So basically, uh, the textbook is not something compulsory, but it compulsory. will be very, very helpful. Okay. Mm -mm. Uh, but be because usually for students in campus, if they don't have the book, uh, their own book, they can always go to the library. But unfortunately, since all of you are at home, maybe we need to rely very much on the e-books and something like that. Mm -mm. Yeah, okay. What much. platform can we watch the recorded lectures? Siapa nak jawab? Miss Siti Fahana ke? Uh, I think you can, it is available in YouTube, right? No, I think this is for the classes. Classes. This in what platform can we watch the recorded lectures? Uh, okay. Uh, actually, it depends on the practice of your lecturer. But for me, I am using Google Classroom. And at the end of the session, okay, I will give the recording uh, in the Google Classroom. Okay. And I will ask all my students to join uh, the Google Classroom of their own section and you can watch uh, the recorded lectures in the Google Classroom. Okay, but uh, again, it depends on the practice of your respective lecture. Ada some of us uh, prefer to use Telegram, ada some of us prefer to use iTaklim, but uh, as I mentioned, as for me, I prefer to use Google Classroom. Okay? Just sharing for, for my class. Um... I will not be giving any of my recorded lecture except for those who um, ask for it either dia tak datang with, with good reason or masa dah nak exam tu dia nak tengok balik nak recap balik then I, I, I will forward the email uh, but uh, by default Madam tak uh, upload dekat, G, dekat apa, GC ke apa so you have to ask your own lecturer lah Okay dia datang plus Uh, Will we be able to study at the campus in the future? Uh, let me answer this last sikit before yeah. I pass to Madam Farah. Of course, we would like to welcome you to the campus. That's your place, the best place for you to study. But unfortunately, due to the current situation, we have to uh, maybe this semester or maybe in October, November, we have to wait for the official announcement from the university. Madam Farah, nak tambah apa-apa ke? This question. Uh, there is hope, inshallah. Let's pray for the best uh, for the COVID to go back uh, to have our normal uh, life again, inshallah. We are preparing you. We can wait to receive you, inshallah. Let's pray for uh, just right where we're going. Somewhere in October, November, perhaps. Inshallah. Um, next question. Um, what about students who are still applying? for change of program to law. Do we need to fill in the Google form too if sure. you are interested in uh, Quranic language? Uh, change of program. Macam mana nak isi Change of program. Uh, I would encourage you to fill in the form. Okay, but maybe later you have to email me or if you have my number, you can WhatsApp me as well. Uh, inform me if your application uh, for change of program is successful. Then I will proceed to process your application. Okay, so firstly, maybe you can fill in the form first. Okay, tapi at the same time, uh, kena alert saya jugalah yang you are still applying for this change of program. 
Okay, and then kalau kata your uh, application for change of program is successful and then alert me again, I will process your application. Okay. Thank you, Miss Fahana. Uh, the IFT students have to take both EPT and APT even if their SPM result for English and Arabic are A and above, right? IFP is stands for International Foundation Program. Is it the program by Academy? I think yes. it's Academy. Okay. IGSE. Uh, uh, they kata they need to take they need to take both EPT and EPT. I'm not sure how to respond to this. I think he is asking and above, right? Then. Maksudnya dia punya placement tak ikut result. Um. I'm not sure. Can uh, uh, I think maybe for this question, uh, this I will ask directly with Odile. Uh, good, good. Okay, Thank please you. help them. Eh? Yeah. Sure. Uh, is Melek Society applicable to international foundation program students who are in Gomba? Or oh, actually, uh, uh, in Gomba, they have a different mm. society. They call Law Student Society, Law SOC. They cater the undergraduate study, uh, undergraduate mm. students. But usually we uh we often invite students can even students in academy we also invite part and parcel in as uh to join the uh, program conducted by Milex here in this center. But yeah, uh, uh, I'm not sure whether they have a wing for the academy or not. Maybe this is something that we can look into in the future after this, so that we can have a say and representative there as well. Okay. Uh, if I don't take Quranic language, Arabic languages, will it be a problem if I want to pursue my degree in IIUM2? Meaning if for students who have no background in Arabic language at all. Uh, hmm. Miss Fahana nak jawab ke? Student who uh, never have Arabic language basic. If you do not have a basic in Arabic language, uh, basically you will be placed in level 1 uh, Arabic, uh, sorry, level 1 Quranic language uh, English medium. Okay, as uh, what Brother Rizwan uh, mentioned to you previously, um, we will have to take a look at the result of your uh, Quranic language uh, in this semester. Okay, uh, and then we will discuss further whether to proceed with your application if you are interested to pursue with your LLBS later. Okay, so but you... Huh? I think the student, uh, maybe dia risau dekat sekolah tak belajar bahasa Arab langsung. So dekat, dekat CFS ada bahasa Arab level 1, level 2. Just yeah, to, I think just to share, uh, I'm from a non-religious school too. I never learned Arabic language in school, but I survived CFS IUM, Alhamdulillah. So it's for everyone. Level 1 and level 2, Arabic language, English medium is for everyone, inshallah. Kalau lurah Arabiah mu'asirah tu sama ke dengan bahasa Arab untuk syarat APT? Based on the student handbook, it's equivalent kan? Equivalent. Uh, yes, the practice last year is equivalent. Equivalent. Mm -hmm. The students who would like to join double degree Sharia without Arabic basic also need to fill in the Google form for double degree. We dah double degree dah program nak masuk. Not yet. Eh? Uh, if I may add before I pass to Miss Fahana, the stream streamlining to enter the Sharia uh, stream only happen in the kuliah. But here at CFS, we will only to facilitate and prepare you to join the stream in Gombak later on. So here basically are, what are the difference between the so-called uh, civil and non-civil uh, and Sharia student is the Arabic language requirement only. Okay. Is it possible for a stream student to change to this course? Miss Fahana. Hmm. Miss Fahana. For change of program, uh, you have to make an application to ODAI. And it is not automatic and subject to availability, lah, of course. What is the difference between English medium and Arabic medium for law? Ms. Fahana, ke? Okay, uh, so basically for English medium, okay, in a way, okay, you are not registered for uh, Arabic, uh, sorry, Quranic language, uh, Arabic medium courses. Okay, you are registered for uh, Quranic language, Arabic medium courses. So hmm. difference dia adalah nanti sering lain ni dekat gombak lah. Basically, kalau you English medium, okay, you akan buat LLB saja. Tapi kalau you Arabic medium, 
dekat gombak later on okay you will be doing double degree llb and llbs just okay. to inform you why we call it english medium and arabic medium because the medium of instruction of the courses if you want to pursue your degree in uh, civil law only the courses in gombak will be taught to you in english but those who are interested to streamline into the Sharia program in the kuliah, the courses or the subject related to the Sharia program or Sharia LLBS program, they are in Arabic language. That's why it is called Arabic uh, Quranic language Arabic medium. Okay. How many students? How many students? Uh, sorry, I skip one question. Assalamualaikum, sir and miss. Boleh tanya bagaimana proses pembelajaran kita, adakah kelas akan lama kelamaan menjadi lebih pack, lebih stres atau hari pertama tu terjun masuk kelas? Sounds like parents yang tanya. Um, Madam HOD, can you respond to this? Uh, ada question again? Uh, adakah kita terus masuk kelas-kelas makin lama, makin stres, makin uh, hari pertama tu terus terjun masuk kelas? Uh, <laughs> uh, tak, insyaAllah tak. Eh. The first first class, uh, lecturer akan brief you the course outline week by week. So you will be ready, mentally ready. Yeah. Lecturer will be very helpful to explain to you what's going to happen next week. So how to go about this? Uh, you will have you spend more time uh, uh, when you learn uh, when you have teaching and learning remotely. Eh, itu kelebihan uh, RTL lah. Uh, so don't worry. Uh, Insyaallah it will be easy. It will be uh, smooth and not heavy. But please alert your like lecturer lah if you are burnt out. Uh, kata ini tak ada lah penatnya, stressnya. Uh, please inform your colleagues and your friends and your uh, lecturer. Uh, respectively, should you need any further assistance, okay, we will be happy to help you. So don't worry. I think secondary school is more stress and harder. Yeah. Once I pass SPM, then I think university life is very, very much um, much better, uh, better and relax. Yeah. No worry. I think uh, as to the content and the nature of the courses, yes, it's a little bit more challenging, especially when all the courses are in English medium, all the six courses, thinking skill and so on, are all taught in English. So for those who might feel stressed or those who are, might be a little bit scared to join or enter class later on, um, it's you still got time to brush up a little bit of your English because it, it, will, it will be a very helpful um, medium it will be a very important medium for you to use uh, in class okay and yes we'll become more stressed yes it will become more packed but it goes back to how you manage your time how your lecture manage your assignment how you manage your group work how you use your friends as your distress and so on okay uh, so don't worry we are all here for you and if you think you are so eager to 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 uh, to see your lecturers in class Believe me, all your lecturers are much, much eager to see you. Especially we have been doing this for almost more than one year. We miss our students a lot. So we really want to see and know you. So don't worry, inshallah. Next question. If I don't take Arabic in SPM, would I be able to take Quranic language in English medium or Arabic medium? English medium. English medium, okay. How many students in one group? One group, like one class would be um, 20 to 25 yeah. students at most. 20 to yeah. 25 students. I would like to ask for your opinion. Would it be a loss if students who took Arabic subject during SPM did not pursue Arabic medium? Good question. Fana, no. Ah. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for the question. Okay, uh, my response would be like this. Uh, it is actually uh, an option and it is actually your choice. Okay, if, tapi if you are asking me, obviously I am encouraging all my students uh, who have this Arabic background or you have basic in Arabic language uh, to pursue with your LLBS degree in uh, main campus Kumba. Okay, if you are asking me, okay, I highly recommend and I highly encourage my student to pursue with your LLBS. Okay, in other words, here in CFS to complete your uh, Quranic language uh, Arabic medium courses. Okay, tetapi at the end of the day, uh, it depends on your... Um, it, it depends on you, okay? It is your choice. You are big enough uh, to make uh, your choice, okay? Whether to pursue or not, okay? We are not here to force or pressure you, 
Okay, tapi kalau kata you you dah masuk for example uh, Arabic, uh, sorry Quranic classes and you feel like it is very stressful, you cannot cope with the class, you cannot understand at all, then it's okay. Alright, so tapi um, as the general rule, uh, obviously we are we are in the department, we are encouraging students to pursue with their LLBS degree in Gomba. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Farana. Actually, that is actually the very aim of the establishment of IUM. We want to produce more people who are who are well versed with the shari uh, in the Sharia. Um, ninety percent belajar total berapa subjek? This is actually have been mentioned by uh, Miss Farana in well when she presented on the study plan. Okay, maybe you can uh, browse through the video again. But in general, you'll be offered two specialized courses, Introduction to Law, Introduction to Islamic Law, and then uh, uh, Understanding Islam 1, and then you have your language courses, and then maybe your Usra. Okay, maybe you can look into the study plan again. Usra. Um, salam committee, oh, okay. Tak semua boleh belajar syariah ke? Macam mana nak jawab ni, Fana? Uh, let me explain from the viewpoint of a non-shariah student at the center. Okay. Now, uh, learning ex learning law uh, experience in IUM is a very unique one to me because, as for me, I I I'm, I don't come from religious school. I don't have Arabic basic language in school. Um, I didn't pursue my LLBS. Uh, I don't have the will and the the the, the skill uh, for Arabic language basically. But the system or the the content of the courses in the university itself later on in the kuliah, they, uh, walaupun you are civil law student, you will still need to study Sharia courses ni. But they are in English. Uh, but they are in English. So if you eager about the knowledge of Sharia, uh, if you eager about the knowledge of Sharia, don't worry, it will be provided to you. Okay, semua orang ada peluang belajar Sharia. It's just that after the four year, you cannot become, uh, you, you don't have LLBS lah. But of course, later on, you can do your advanced diploma and so on. And since you have background already for family law, Islamic criminal law and so on, it, it will be much more easier for you. We have a lot of graduates yang tak ada basic Arabic, tak buat LLBS, but end up practice Sharia after pursuing advanced diploma and so on. Um, can I take this as the last question? May I ask when and where we can get the change of program form? Ni maybe kena tanya committee ke? Is the committee? Ah uh, yes, for change of programs tu, ah uh, sekarang ni officer said they will announce ah uh, dekat official website. So I hope semua can take note lah dekat official website for further announcement regarding change of program. Okay, thank you very much, Sis Naila. I think uh, that's all. Can ada soalan lagi ke? And if you have further question, actually, you can email us at legalstudies at iium.edu.my. Inshallah, we will try to respond to your queries. Okay? Don't worry, we are here to assist you. Uh, before, before we end, I think uh, I would like Madam Hit to say something to our students ni. Any final words from... Uh, kita start dengan Miss Fahana dulu lah. Miss Fahana, Madam Nina, Madam Hit. Boleh? Oh, boleh, boleh. Okay. Okay, thank you very much uh, everyone uh, for your attention uh, uh, the department briefing uh, for law students. Okay, I wish you all the best uh, throughout your one year study here in CFS IIUM. Uh, so if you have any problem, okay, if you need any kind of assistance, um, we would be very happy. Uh, we will be very happy to help you. Okay, so please contact us. Uh, I already attached uh, my email uh, in the chat box in your YouTube. Okay, if you have any question to ask, uh, especially regarding your academic matters, uh, please email me. Okay, thank you very much and all the best. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Ms. Fahna. Madam Nina, Madam Nina. Okay. Um, you have about, uh, the first class will be on the 16th August. You have about like two weeks, to, approximately two weeks to prepare yourself for this course. Okay, so my uh, remember that you are now not a school high schoolers anymore. You are entering. You're about to enter the age of majority. You may now be soon go vote, or go for election, go voting in an election. So you are not um do not 
consider yourself not regard yourself as kanak-kanak uh, budak sekolah you are not budak-budak anymore you are now becoming an adult so um try to become more mature okay have a self responsibility bangun pagi kelas pukul 8 kena lah bangun pagi kan so um tak boleh nak harap kau mak kejut lah uh, tak mak tak kejut so tak pergi kelas so um it is not something yang kena ajar it is common sense so try to be more um responsible and in this two weeks time ask around how how would be uh, the life of uh, a university student is yeah? um maybe your your seniors have um, some tips some notes so the notes may not be relevant now ataupun mungkin kita dah tukar subjek ke mungkin dah tak relevant tapi kalau ada maybe um sedikit sebanyak would help you to um to embark into the new life ni lah. So this is new, very new for you. Uh, I'm sure you are so uh, excited and maybe you are also um, macam tak tahu kan apa, macam mana, how, how, how would be, well, how would be conducted assignment tu macam mana nak buat. So, um, so regard this as a, a learning process and in the meantime, um, try to be more um, more adaptive lah to the to your new uh, life. So uh, we really hope that we could see you uh, physically face to face. I don't know, maybe this semester, maybe in the in the, in the next semester or in the next year. Tak tahu lah. Okay, let's just hope for the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Nina. Last but not least, Madam Farahiza, the head of department. Any last word? Uh, last word. Uh, simple je, uh, you are now uh, part of the IIUM, eh? part, part of the university, so please carry your uh, good virtues, uh, good ethics, yeah? uh, macam yang Madam Nina, Miss Farhana, okay? semua tip-tip um, uh, yang berguna lah, okay? you are, you are, you have, you, this is a, a change of a face, your face of life, so you have to be ready, be prepared, uh, make sure you are in control of your life you must know what you're doing you must know your target what will what you prepare for yourself eh? as far as our university is concerned we are preparing yourself to lead the world uh, you are going to be the future leaders of the world okay and uh, among others uh, satu je bila nak pesan uh, jaga solat uh, ini adalah Uh, resepi, resepi kejayaan lah mana-mana uh, kalau awak tengok orang yang berjaya uh, kita nak berjaya di dunia dan akhirat kita jaga hubungan kita dengan Allah solat tu jangan tinggal terlepas wajib kodok uh, okay? selawat Nabi hari-hari so kena jagalah amalan ni kita punya spiritual tu kita punya dalaman tu sentiasa tenang supaya boleh senang ilmu nak masuk uh, okay? so ingat jaga solat Uh, jaga adab dengan guru uh, Kita nak cari keberkatan ni uh, kan? Kita nak jadi orang yang berjaya We want to be someone We want to be great leader We want to be uh, penyambung uh, Waris satu ambil ahlak-ahlak Nabi Penyambung syiar Islam So uh, preparing yourself Your mindset is important Set your mindset, your goals uh, So clear dekat situ And and, and uh, make sure you have a good relationship uh, uh, Dengan Allah uh, He's everything. He's our creator. He is the one who holds every uh, secrets of life and uh, the success. Uh, InsyaAllah. Semoga kita berjaya dunia dan akhirat. Eh? Semoga all the students will have all the benefit, the best of dunia, the worldly affairs and also akhirat. InsyaAllah. All Thank the best. Thank you very much, Madam Head of Department. I just want to say very short words. Welcome to the Center for Foundation Studies. To be honest, I cannot wait to see you in class. I can't wait to see you joining uh, Milex activities. And uh, let us make this uh, this difficult time as, as uh, something that is a challenge for us. Because great pressure, great challenge, great, uh, great people. So hopefully, uh, we'll see you soon. And uh, thank you very much. I pass the floor to our Miss MC. Alright. Uh, thank you to all speakers for the wonderful insights and also for answering the questions. Alhamdulillah, believe it or not, we are already at the end of our session. 
Hence, I would like to thank again Madam Fariza, Madam Nina, Ms. Farhana, Saridwan, and all students involved for being present throughout the session. We will now adjourn the session with Tasbih Kifara and Surah al -Az. See you again on another session under the Ta'arufi, inshallah. Thank you, Naila. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Pamiti. Thank you all. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you. Thank you. All the best in Gomba. Thank you, sir.